What does it stand for? What does it stand for? Attention. How do you feel, scholars? We feel good, sir. How do you feel, scholars? We feel good, sir. What is our weapon, scholars? Our weapon is awesome, sir. How are we going to unite? As one. As what? As one. Attention. Set this up. Sarah Salute. Pay homage to number seven. Set this up. Sarah Salute. Pay homage to number seven. Both women came out in support of each other. I just feel like the fact that I have to go through this is just an example for the next person that has emotions and that want to express themselves and they want to be a strong woman and they're going to be allowed to do that because of today. Maybe it didn't work out for me, but it's going to work out for the next person. 2015, Serena Williams. You may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. Serena Williams. You may trod me in the very dirt but still, like dust, I rise. Just like moons and like suns, with the certainty of tides. Just like hope springing high, still, I rise. Did you want to see me broken, bowed head and lowered eyes? Shoulders falling down like teardrops, winged by my soulful cries. Out of the huts of history's shame I rise. Up from a past that's rooted in pain I rise. I'm a black ocean, leaping and wide. Welling and swelling I bear in the tide. Leaving behind nights of terror and fear, I rise. Into a daybreak that's wondrously clear, I rise. Bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave, I am the dream and the hope of a slave. I rise. As he said, we can't stop all the violence in the world. But if there is even one thing we can do, even one step we can take to save another child or another parent from the grief that's visited families like Hydeas and so many others here today, then don't we have an obligation to try? But we all know that these reforms must be just one part of a comprehensive effort to rebuild our neighborhoods and, and build a better future. If our kids keep waking up in neighborhoods where they don't feel safe on their own front porches, if they're still attending schools with crumbling ceilings and ripped up textbooks, if there's nowhere safe for them to go when that afternoon bell rings, then nothing speaks louder than that, nothing. So let's be clear. This is going to take a serious and sustained investment over a very long period of time, people. This is forever. See, at the end of the day, this is the point I want to make. That resources matter. They matter. That what it takes to build strong, successful young people isn't genetics or pedigree or good luck. It's opportunity. And I know from my own experience, I started out with exactly the same aptitude, exactly the same intellectual, emotional capabilities as so many of my peers. And the only thing that separated me from them was that I had a few more advantages than some of them did. I had adults who pushed me I had activities that engaged me, schools that prepared me to succeed. I had a community 
that supported me and a neighborhood where I felt safe. And in the end, that was the difference between growing up and becoming a lawyer, a mother, and first lady of the United States and being shot dead at the age of 15. I pledge to never bring a gun to school. I pledge to never use a gun to settle my dispute. I pledge to never bring a gun in my community. I pledge to never bully my peers or my classmates. I pledge my struggle and stress is not my identity. My struggle and stress is hard work and positive energy. I pledge to never take my life in my own hands. These are shoes that should be worn by children running and playing, and instead they're empty soles. And that's really the point. We're bringing to Congress's doorstep the terrible, heartbreaking tragedy of their inaction on gun violence. I think that arming teachers is the NRA's distraction tool. Their entire goal is to sell more guns for the gun manufacturers, not keep our kids safe. There's not a parent in America who doesn't feel the same overwhelming grief that I do. The majority of those who died today were children. Uh, beautiful little kids between the ages of 5 and 10 years old. They had their entire lives ahead of them. Birthdays, graduations, weddings, kids of their own. are not enough. It's not enough. It does not capture the heartache and grief and anger that we should feel. And it does nothing to prevent this carnage from being inflicted someplace else in America. Perhaps now America would wake up to the dimensions of this challenge if it could happen in a place like Littleton and we could prevent anything like this from happening again. We must do more to reach out to our children and teach them to express their anger and to resolve their conflicts with words, not weapons. Schools should be places of safety and sanctuary and learning. When that sanctuary is violated, the impact is felt in every American classroom and every American community. And we ask a loving God to comfort those who are suffering today. bump stock ban, we want assault weapons bans in all states, we want our congress people to stop taking money from the NRA, and finally and most importantly, we want the background checks to be reinforced, we want more background checks, we want it to be really hard to get a gun. When I say gun, you say law, gun, 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 gun. I hope that the president will step up, stop accepting money from the NRA, because if all the deaths that have occurred aren't enough to convince him, then I guess it just has to be us protesting right now. We're turning our backs against the people who won't stand up for us, and we're hoping that that will get their attention and they will start to represent what we're fighting for.
name is Naomi and I'm 11 years old. I represent the African American women who are victims of gun violence. I'm here to say never again for those girls too. Never did I think I would be herded like cattle by a shower of bullets that let me scarred and rattled. My brother, he was in high school when he passed away. You hear pops thinking they're fireworks. They weren't pops. My nephew, Deshaun Moore. He was taken away on May 28th in the year of 2017, two weeks after his 16th birthday. And to the politicians that believe that their right to own a gun comes before our lives, get ready to get voted out by us, the future. Uh, when uh, Trayvon Martin was first shot, uh, I said that this could have been my son. Uh, another way of saying that is, uh, Trayvon Martin could have been me uh, 35 years ago. And when you think about why, in the African American com community at least, um, there's a lot of pain around what happened. Because we didn't have things like this, what did I do? What did my friends do? We took guns. We robbed people. We took guns. We shot people. We took guns. We killed people. And I ended up going to prison at the age of 17. We must make our children know that they matter. Because I didn't think I mattered. You can't think you matter if you're going to grab a gun and go do crime. You can't think you matter if you're going to kill somebody else's son or daughter. Because you don't love yourself. We got to keep on teaching self-love like this. You cannot let this spark die. You got to need to come out and support this and any other movement that teaches love. That teaches, that teaches you to care about yourself. Because if you care about yourself, you ain't going to do nothing to hurt. What about you? Waller County. What about you jailers? What about you not paying attention to where she was at, what she was doing, how she was feeling? You know, you can't orchestrate uh, the frustration and you can't control the desire to see change. This is the New York City Police Department. Please be advised tonight after an unarmed African-American teenager was shot and killed by police in the St. Louis suburb of Ferguson, Missouri. But there are conflicting reports about what led up to the shooting. NBC's John Yang has the details. On the streets of Ferguson, Missouri, outrage and anger. Protesters of different ages and races demanding answers to the shooting death of 18-year-old Michael Brown at the hands of a police it's been nearly four months since Cornelia Reynolds discovered the unthinkable. Her eight-year-old son dead in his bedroom. Gabriel had hanged himself from his bunk bed. He probably didn't want to say, Ma, um, somebody bullying or picking on me, you know. He just didn't know how to tell me. Reynolds spoke with our Cincinnati affiliate, WLWT, days after Gabriel's death and says she was never told her third grader was being bullied. But tonight, this video has been released showing an alleged assault in a school bathroom where Gabriel is knocked unconscious two days before he ended. His ...on the answers they found. <laughs> It's good to protest against people that are bullying others. It's not every day you see fourth grade students just walk out of school like they did this morning at Bill Roberts K-8 in Stapleton. No more bullies! No more bullies! 
with permission from their teachers. Our kids want to stomp out bullying and put an end to it because bullying affects all of them. If they're not bullied, one of their friends is. Dozens of kids marching with a purpose. And personalized signs. Bullying is wrong. Don't be the worm in some... Another murder is just another murder. It, it, it has no person, no heart, no soul attached to it. Hope Ross's granddaughter Gabriel is the heart and soul behind an unsolved murder 10 years ago. She was just a baby and someone shot and killed her dad, also named Gabriel. So Hope made little Gabe these wings. It, it's kind of like a heart to show. They were bigger on her when she was five. Hope made them because it was bring your father to work day at Gabe's school. And I didn't want her to miss that day and that was a way that I could, she could go and we could make sure that her father was represented. Yet Gabe always asks about others. I think it's sad for them too because they don't have no, they don't have a dad there to help them. Once after seeing another shooting on the news, Gabe turned to grandma and asked. Does that man have children? And I said, I don't know if he has children. She said, if he has children, they'll be just like me have no father. And I said, absolutely. And she said, I'm going to write somebody. I said, oh, well, who are you going to write? She said, God. She's also written community leaders because she says no one should forget the kids. They may be growing up angry. Do you think some of them feel forgotten? Yes. What, why is that? Because they really don't have no one to love and they've, they've lost somebody. You think there's a lot of kids like that? Yes. Our people have lost their lives trying to change the world and they're coming for a better safe place. Buy your hands, put your sins up in the moment of silence. Can everybody please stand? Everybody put your peace signs up. Right hand over your heart. And bow your heads and pay homage to the wonderful police officers that came today. And pay homage to people that lost their lives over the gun shoot. Can we get a moment of silence for about a minute? Thank you. those who marched that day, then all of us are called to possess their moral imagination. All of us will need to feel as they did the fierce urgency of them. All of us need to recognize as they did that change depends on our actions, on our attitudes, the things we teach our children. And if we make such an effort, no matter how hard it may sometimes seem, Laws can be passed, and consciences can be stirred, and consensus can be built. With such an effort, we can make sure our criminal justice system serves all and not just some. Together, we can raise the level of mutual trust that policing is built on. The idea that police officers are members of the community 
they risk their lives to protect. And citizens in Ferguson and New York and Cleveland, they just want the same thing young people here marched for 50 years ago, the protection of the law. Together we can address unfair sentencing and overcrowded prisons and the stunted circumstances that rob too many boys of the chance to become men and rob the nation of too many men who could be good dads and good workers and good neighbors. With effort, we can roll back poverty and the roadblocks to opportunity. You know, Americans don't accept a free ride for anybody, nor do we believe in equality of outcomes, but we do expect equal opportunity. And if we really mean it, if we're not just giving lip service to it, but if we really mean it and we're willing to sacrifice for it, then yes, we can make sure every child gets an education suitable to this new century. One that expands imaginations and lifts sights and gives those children the skills they need. We can make sure every person willing to work has the dignity of a job and a fair wage and a real voice and sturdier rungs on that ladder into the middle class. Because Selma shows us that America is not the project of any one person. Because the single most powerful word in our democracy is the word we. We the people. We shall overcome. Yes, we can. That word is owned by no one. It belongs to everyone. Oh, what a, what a glorious task we are given to continually try to improve this great nation of ours. Sarah Salute, pay homage to number seven. Sarah is up. Sarah Salute, pay homage to number seven.